Guys, we have a great video coming up for you today. I just had a conversation with Jojo Josiah, and I'm recording this intro after we actually had the conversation. I gotta say, it was phenomenal. Guys, if you are new to this series, we have different creators on with the goal of getting to know more about the creator behind the camera. It's not just asking them about Fortnite. It's not asking them about the games they play, anything like that. Of course, we touch on it, but the whole point of this is to get to know, again, more of the person behind the camera. This was fantastic. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Thank you very much for being here. Let's get into it. Jojo, welcome back to the channel. First time, just like Clark. You've never been here before. Nobody, nobody ever, nobody's ever seen you here before. <laughs> so, like I said, we're going to dive into it. Introduce yourself, share a bit of your background, and what inspired you to start making content. Oh, wow. Okay. Um. So, I am Jojo. Um, my channel name, Jojo Josiah. I make a lot of funny moments content. Um, I've been doing this a while now. Um, I seriously started doing it about, around like five years ago, and... Let's see what inspired me. Um, I just watched a lot of content creators that made really cool, like funny moments content. And I was like, that seems fun. I want to do that. So that's kind of where things began. Did you always start with Fortnite? Because you said about you got serious about five years ago. So basically, when I like first started, I was just trying different things out um, because it was... I, I found these different content creators through like my friends who basically at the time we were all playing League of Legends and um, they started showing me these different content creators and I was like, oh, wait, like this is cool. This is funny. This is interesting. Um, and then those content creators usually would do like a variety of stuff, but they did funny moments content too. And so then I started being like, oh, I kind of want to like try making videos like this and see if I can make them. And the first stuff that I made, horrible, like trash, <laughs> garbage. And I have privated all of it. Oh, it is that's what bad. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you if it was still up because I don't think I've ever dug deep into your channel. Yeah, my I the So when I like really started was and the stuff that started like actually doing good was when like chapter one Fortnite. Oh, okay. and that's like when I. There was early chapter one Fortnite videos that I made that were like not really my current style. Um, but like the beginning of my channel and where I would say like I am I am the most proud of. It's still bad, but I'm like, <laughs> this is good enough that I won't like want to die if someone sees it. <laughs> I still have um, my old stuff up in that sense. It's like like full games pretty much yeah was it kind of like that your old stuff or did you still like edit it and try to make it funny no so my i would have been fine if it was just like a playthrough like i would have been like okay well, like that's fine no i was like trying to do like voiceover content of like uh just like a hundred drops type thing like yeah kind of okay it was it was it would be like in league of legends i would play like a certain character and then i would like explain that character and explain their moves and then and try to like weave in jokes and stuff i, I basically see. straight up ripped it from another content creator that was doing the same thing just to like try making that kind of stuff i've seen a couple was of, a couple things so like bad. that it was so bad <laughs> i like looking back on, on old stuff though i still i was telling clark this too when we were we were talking we we're talking about old content he still has all his stuff up too i wish mm. i would have kept my like i had a whole channel before this one and i just deleted it all i wish i kept it uh, it sucks see but. mine mine's there if i want to reminisce and like hate myself i can go <laughs> watch it it's just private so it's there but it's private oh okay can i watch sometime oh god dude i, I don't even I, know if i can show that to anyone <laughs> no that's so fair. bad so another thing i was gonna ask you is if you were like like i said uh diving into any other content besides fortnite what made you stick with fortnite so i i have always been and i've i've explain this to a lot of people because i don't think people understand me and like why i do this thing but i played league and like i stuck to it for like years like i that was my game and it was several years that i was only playing that game like i would play other stuff on the side like i used to play smash on the side and i'll play other games that i liked and i would play them a decent amount but i stick to like one and so i went i went to league and then I played that for a while. I was playing like ranked and doing stuff with my friends. That was fun. And then um, PUBG came out. And that was like like the first Battle Royale thing that really blew up. And people were like, 
losing their minds about it. My friends were like, hop on, hop on, hop on. And so then I started doing that, started doing like stuff where, you know, I would use the proximity chat to make like funny videos. And, and then again, still bad content, but I was trying. <laughs> oh, that's um, what I was going to ask if you were making content, all that, if you were just playing them. Yeah, no, I was making content. I pretty much, so when I first started playing League, it was only a couple years, I would say, until then I was like, okay, I'm going to start making content. Jeez. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. Once I once I found out about content creation, because growing up, my little brother was like super into YouTube. He loved it. And then he would like show me stuff. And I was like, that's cringe. I hate all of that. <laughs> and so I like, I would like swore off YouTube. Like I never watched anyone. And when everyone, everyone brings up like, the old Minecraft YouTubers or all the old, like, I don't know, nostalgic content. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I never watched any of it. That's crazy. I even watched the old Minecraft YouTubers. So no, like the only thing I watched was I watched, oh, what was his name? Tobuscus play Happy Wheels. And then <laughs> my parents found out that I was watching that and they're like, this is gore. You can't watch this anymore. <laughs> and so then I was like, okay, well, I'm not watching YouTube anymore, pretty much. Dude, that was and... my mom, but she didn't like that. I uh Yeah. <laughs> she let me, but she didn't like it. She's like, this is stupid. Isn't that a little too bloody? Like <laughs> Yeah, well, my parents got mad. <laughs> um my, my dad was the saving grace. Nice. Okay. Yeah, mine wasn't. Um <laughs> but then so I just like didn't watch youtube really at all and then i remember my little brother again was watching twitch like a long time ago and i was like what even are you doing like what is this and he was watching league of legends streamers and then i think that's when i started like looking into what even is twitch and what even is like a content creator <laughs> And then it just took me like a couple years and I was like, oh, this seems really cool. And it, it combines like all my interests. Like I like being creative. I like being like a business person. And then I like playing video games. That's and solid. and it just like when I when I started doing it, I was like, I remember like telling my friends and my parents, I was like, this is like the combination of all my interests in like the <laughs> most perfect way. That's awesome. And yeah, it just took me a long time to start uh, developing those skills because I think a lot of content creators kind of like, they'll be like, yeah, I was making videos when I was like eight years old. And I was like, I wish I had like that <laughs> experience under my belt. I, I was like 18 and I was making the most dog shit <laughs> videos ever. Dude, same. I I started my my first channel like it was so i started going hard on this one i made it around 2020 so like 2019 2018 i was still way older when i started so i get that yeah and then the, you have the same kind of cringe except mine the problem with mine was uh because i i have an mma channel now but that was what my first one was so mm -hmm. i still had all of like i i don't want to i don't know how else to say this i can toot my own horn i'm really knowledgeable about mma so everything right. i was saying was still really good and factual but it was just awkward in front of the camera like uh, so I think JoJo <laughs> just <are> like <laughs> oh, that was mine. So I didn't use a face cam for a really long time. So I I was able to, but I was it was still awkward. Like I didn't even have to do the whole. I didn't have to show my face, and I was still awkward. So it was just like super embarrassing. How bad? And I didn't understand like how to naturally speak in a video either. And so all my like voiceover stuff was like so awkward and then it was cut super weird and it was just it was bad no i get that it takes a while to like look at a camera and just talk to it now now it i can does. see like if it's, there's people there it's like the camera's a person but <laughs> yeah it's definitely strange to get used to but it is for fortnite what made you stick with fortnite okay so right so i i i was again i i jumped from game to game and then basically after pubg like I, I like PUBG a lot because of the glitches and that's like there's there's certain clips in PUBG that I would just lose my shit laughing because like a glitch was so funny to me. And then Fortnite, PUBG like slowly started to like fix their game and patch out all the glitches, which is like good for your game, but not fun for me. And then <laughs> I started playing Fortnite and then like after I want to say like the rocket launch event and just playing with friends and then like it took me a while like for a while i was going back and forth i was like okay i'll play some fortnite 
just to see how it is and then i'll go back and so it was around like season three um but then like season four i want to say is when i was like okay no like i really like this game <laughs> and and then it just started becoming i would say like early like season three season four season five like probably up until season six or seven i was like not sure it was my game um but then they just started doing like wacky stuff like the baller and <laughs> like the flint knock when they released the flint knock in season eight that was like the most fun item of any game i have ever played oh because I, I was that. just killing my friends over and <laughs> over and over and it was like during <laughs> it was during the time where like like the kind of trolling you could do like i used to knock them into the water that would insta kill you yes and you all the time yeah and like <laughs> but that was like the best thing ever for me and then <laughs> there's also just fortnite i think because they make new mechanics so often there's new glitches like all the time and they can be like so fun and so interesting Dude, you know what I never, like, understood? I understand, don't get me wrong, like, the competitive players. I'm not talking about them. But, like, the average person, like, would get upset about a glitch. And I'm like, That's how? crazy to me. How? And that's, yeah. I agree with that. That's the best part. Like, cars Dude, flying like, across the map all of a sudden. Stuff like that. I don't know. If, do, you, do you remember, like, Chapter 2, Season 4, where you could, like, eat a fuckload of peppers and then use the Iron Man mythic up into a box. And then if you hit a bouncer, you would go across the map. You're ringing a bell. I don't think I've ever done that one. But, so, but the point being, there's so many. There's stuff like, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was so... And, the, and then they started doing things where it was like a speed up and a low grab and a, the way different things would interact. I was like, I wonder if I could make this glitch out or try this and see what happens with this. And, and then also like the art style, emotes, um, basically everything again, like converged into... And then they started doing collabs like the Thanos. I remember the Thanos uh, event. That was like a big like, holy shit. This game is fucking awesome. <laughs> Agreed. And they started bringing in, you know, different collabs of series that I like. And then it just there, there's been po there's been points like I would say probably last year was one of the times where I was like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. But then I sort of wrote it out and played other games for a while um did you not like chapter four is that why so uh, i think i like chapter four but it was the combination of them firing a lot of the employees and like wilds i thought was awful <laughs> and i think that was like the low point for me it was kind of and that was around the time where i realized like um this isn't going to be donald mustard's like Fortnite anymore yeah and he was like a big reason why I because like I feel like his inner child is like very similar to my inner child. Same. And so his like what everything he was doing, um, it, it almost felt like it was perfectly suited for me. I mean, there's like barely any bad seasons um, and there would be a few and those few like sucked. But <laughs> I even I don't know the game even at its worst is usually like I still will hop on every few weeks and play and have a really fun time. I've always and said so, it matters who you're playing with the most. Yeah, it does matter who you're playing with the most. And that makes things and that and the, there's also just, you know, if you're playing with the wrong people, it can be not fun. <laughs> and <laughs> that's that, true. <laughs> and so, you know, I think combination of just all of that stuff sort of led me to be like, I don't know if this is for me, but wrote that out. And now I'm feeling like, okay, like, I feel like I could play unless if they stop supporting BR and they stop caring and like I, I I know there's other people at Epic that also have that inner child that's like the same and then you they want for BR and they like that aspect of see things. Um but I think like as long as it's supported and it's cared about, then I will support it and care about it. So I have a feeling it'll keep going like that. Yeah, I think it's got at least another like couple years. It's interesting that you mentioned last year in Wilds as like a low point for you. Because another thing that I was going to ask you is because people so many times throughout like, I want to say late chapter one to early chapter two-ish. Even in mm -hmm. chapter three, people like just go, ah, I don't like it anymore. I'm out. Did you ever 
think about quitting in any of those seasons? So, I'd say there's two seasons that I almost quit. No, three. And one is very controversial. <laughs> so, the first season I thought about quitting was Chapter 2, Season 2. I thought that's what you are going to say, controversial. That's crazy. Yeah. So, anyways, why? <laughs> because, one, I think, so... So first off, a lot of people, like, the community was bitching around Season X. Like, they were mad, mad. Mm -hmm. And I thought that season was fucking awesome. <laughs> and then we go into Chapter 2, the first season. I'm like, fuck, this is long as shit. But it's good. But it's long as hell. And then the second season, the first, like, couple weeks, fun as fuck. And then the last, like, month and a half to two months. There was like no content because I mean, it was because of COVID. So I give it kind of a pass now, but like, cause it, you know, it had like one of the best battle pass, if not the best battle pass of all time mm -hmm. and stuff like that had events and things like that. But that like month and a half to two months, I was like, I can't do this <laughs> anymore. <laughs> um, but luckily once I like, again, rode that out, then I was chilling for the rest of chapter two, I thought it was good. Like even primal, I was like having fun. Yeah, I liked primal um, too. Yeah, I didn't, it was, I, I would give it like a solid six out of 10, but it was still fun. And like, it, it was not something, I mean, the bows made it fun enough for me that I just, you know, I didn't care. Yeah. Um, But then the next one was vibing and that was another one where I was just like, oh my God, like, I can't do this anymore, man. <laughs> that was and one of my just, least favorite as well. Yeah, there's just some seasons. And then again, Wilds was the next one. And it was just like, there's just some seasons where I think, again, it, it really matters who you're playing with. And I think people like underestimate that mm -hmm. because if you're playing with like a bunch of people who are just bitching about the game, and hate the game you are almost definitely going to hate the game too and i think if i had played with people who like liked it more during that season then i probably would have had a more mild view on it actually yeah that's fun. a good point even for season two like you didn't you didn't play with anybody that like made it fun or no it? my friends hated that season wow yeah. no, okay so and when was... i look back on that i remember like two people grabbing a helicopter and colliding in the air and yeah all that so... weird stuff like there's what there were those weeks that I I feel like I was the one that was like doing the fun having and we were like we would ride a helicopter and then we would fucking boogie bomb it and we'd all yeah. fall on and die. <laughs> um, stuff like that was it was fun and I remember just like loading C4 on someone and then just blowing it and destroying like the entire agency <laughs> yeah oh my um, god with the C4 in the boxes too because my yeah. sister was horrible she still is but horrible <laughs> at the game so she would put the box and we'd all load her up with c4 and go like go rush that build fight like <laughs> <laughs> i loved uh, it but anyways sorry, uh, yeah, there, was, there was i'm trying to think yeah but it was the like i remember my friends at the time like ars were super overpowered they were doing like 70 headshot or more i it was it might have been more especially skies yeah skies <laughs> ar could like literally two hit you it was crazy um and then the ai that season was like unbearable like i i i had fun with it until again the, that month and a half where there was just like nothing and it was just a really hard because season one and season two combined are almost a year mm -hmm. together and so it was just that era where I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> I can't I can take it anymore. I kind of have that feeling for season one, except I'm super, super weird. I just have fun playing even at like the worst seasons. <laughs> yeah. So, but no, I get I that it was stale. So you're probably feeling the same thing for season two, but except I like that season. But before we keep going, I want to ask you about season X then, because everybody okay. hates that season. You're starting to see some love for it now, but yeah. What made you like that one so so much? Probably so, just because you're like goofing around in that sense. Too. Yeah, I was just goofing around. Like one of the things that I always did was I would get in the bottom half of a mech while an enemy got in the top half and then I would walk towards my friends. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I did the same 
thing. <laughs> and then they would be like, what the fuck is killing me? What is killing me? What? And then I would just be like in the bottom half. Like, <laughs> Dude, dude, the best is when like some random player would just go along with it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it happened like decently enough. Yeah, um, and like, I just the game, the game. I I like like the competitive side to an extent. Um, and I'm doing a rank series right now, and I'm having a ton of fun. But I think that that era of Fortnite was so chaotic and it was so interesting that I just, I don't know. I was, I was in my element basically. And it was, I was just super fun. Weekly weapons, weekly map changes. Weekly yeah. Storyline. If you were into that, they were also doing map changes that were like, so crazy. Interesting. Every like week, the tilted town. And there's just stuff where like, making an area that was zero build was like crazy to do at the time. I like the idea of it being uh no breaking either. Right. Yeah. yeah. I loved like hiding in like a tilted town because you couldn't break anything. Like I said, and someone's like strolling by with a mech. It was so scary. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. But that's even just the, the start borderlands of area yep. too, which was like, I mean, to me, I didn't even play borderlands at the time, but I was like <laughs> the, the change in art style when you go in there and then you get full shield also, I, I was even a fan of the, what was it, Moisty Palms, where you'd crouch Same. and turn into a different item. Like, that was so, that that season was so chaotic. It was so <laughs> awesome. Also, I like Taco Time. I thought everyone was being a little bitch. <laughs> Dude, that's yeah. I, I thought it was just fun, the, the random rift zones. Like, you're, you're fighting yeah, somebody, and all so of a sudden, cool. you're both dancing in front of each other, and then it's like, whoever can hit the pump first once it's done. Yeah. Like, I one love thing, that. One thing that, I think that's like my... If I had a wish for Fortnite, it would be to have a season that chaotic again, but make ranked the dumbed down, like no bullshit version. I never of understood things. why they don't do that. Yeah, they I, they've always flip flopped. They'll do it for like a while, and then they'll just be like, never mind, and then go back. <laughs> but even then, it's not like that drastic. Like right. I'm talking like I because I, I like you said, I enjoy competitive too. It's funny how much like we probably enjoy the same game. Actually, that's why I like playing with you, because like even when we're streaming, like Dag and Clark will be like fighting or uh -huh. just, just talking about something and we're like editing ramps. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. Like, I'm glad you get that in that sense. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a really, really good season. But I want to move on because I have asked you two questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's go let's go, we let's said, go i said i'd get jojo for an hour hour and a half and we're probably at this rate not going to hit that mark so again whenever just let me know okay <laughs> all right I'll, I'll i'll keep an eye on the hour mark too so anyways how did you start getting traction on twitch ah, YouTube? Okay. i don't know if you actually here's another thing i don't know if you started youtube and twitch at the same time so i did like it was kind of unusual i think i i started twitch first um, but it was, I was very quickly wanting to like make videos. Um, and it was kind of Twitch. I started because like I would play ranked with my friends and my other friends wanted to watch. And so I just started streaming on Twitch. Um, and then I would hilarious. say like <laughs> pretty quickly, pretty quickly, um, I started wanting to like make videos on it too. Um, what was the question again? Sorry. How did you start getting traction? How did I start getting traction? So I was for a long time going under the radar. Not really. I wasn't. It, it was like an interesting time in my life where like we were moving and I wanted to stream more because I moved away from my friends and um, that's how we like connected and eventually I started wanting to take it more seriously. And so then I was like trying to make these videos and I started posting clips on Reddit. And actually I think that one, one thing that like hooked me on Fortnite was that I posted a clip on Reddit um, back in like chapter one, like again, season three or something. And the clip was titled like what's 97 plus three. Um, and I landed at risky reels i picked up like a green pump i hit someone for 97 and three damage off spawn okay. and i went back into replay 
and their health was glitching between zero and one. It was going <laughs> zero, one, zero, one. And I had I died right after hitting them from three from them. And so it was kind of this moment where because the game actually has like decimal damage. So basically what I did was 97 and three, but what it actually was was like ninety nine point five, basically. That's and so hilarious. their health will just glitch between zero and one and they're not actually dead yet. Um and that got like 20,000 upvotes and like a shit ton of views and comments and everything. And for me at the time, like 20,000 upvotes, basically 20,000 likes on YouTube, like that's like a hundred thousand viewed video. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, wait a second, like this was easy. I was just playing the game and I clipped something and yeah, I went into replay for a little bit and, and got that. But then I started posting like different clips and I'll just try it. and then I started doing like montages and basically um after a while I just became like a staple on the the reddit like everyone just knew who I was and knew my clips and stuff that's awesome um, there's actually a clip I I think I think you've probably seen it there's a clip that it gets reposted by someone in the community and it's a firing squad clip clip back in chapter one. Um, I want to see if I could find it and send it to you. But it it basically we're like flying in the air and then I get knocked and then this team like all lands together. They point at my friend and they all start shooting at the same time. I'd have to and see it. It was I mean, it literally gets I mean, that clip, I shit you not, probably has a billion views huh. over all the times that it's been viewed and, and no one usually recognizes it's me that's wild um, so that's how you start was, getting traction people coming over from that yeah usually coming over from reddit um to my youtube channel youtube channel usually like to twitch mm -hmm. and i started doing like i did like a flint knock trolling video that did really well for me at the time that's awesome. and it's been interesting because it'll be like a spike and then a dip and then a spike and then a dip and it's kind of like learning how to adapt to the 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 dips is the most important part i would say yeah how did you manage that oh man i mean <laughs> not easily there's there's times oh i found the clip do you want to see it yeah yeah okay Hit me. I'll have to. I'll have to take a look at it on my phone, and I will do my best. Apologies if I don't. For anybody watching this, I'll try to remember to put this on screen because I have to look at it on my phone. Uh, all right. Let's see. Let's see. Of course, it's not loading. Oh no. Hang on. We're good. I've seen a lot of old clips. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen that one, <laughs> but that's yeah. a good clip. So That's also funny. like people in the clip were saying that I sounded like Chris Griffin and making fun of me that way too. <laughs> and and then that was like another reason it kind of blew up and stuff. Um but what were what were we just talking about? Sorry. Getting traction. Oh no 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 no. Um I said how did you handle the dips? Oh yeah. So that was basically um I think my first it was kind of like a slow climb. Um in chapter one, like I still slowly started getting more and more. And then I was also another big way I think that I grew is I was um, a big, do you know, BCC? They yes. like, they used to ask me for my clips all the time. So I was in their videos, like almost every video for like six months, at least like every single video would have like a clip of mine in it. That's sick. And I used to watch would, them all the time. Do they still upload? Yeah, I think they do. They're just not as popular anymore. Yeah, I watched them a lot in Chapter 1, Chapter 2. Yeah, that's kind of the era. And then I would always be like, yeah, you can use my clip. Just credit me in the comments or credit me in the description. And people would like come from that channel to mine. I remember I got like 7,000 subs in like a month because wow. of that. I think also the the coordinated like clip Um, because a lot of people went from Reddit to 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 my youtube um but yeah so then that era sort of late chapter one uh again steady climb and then i would say chapter two again the season that i hated 
usually those seasons are always when I dip. <laughs> and so it was like that season was just like a season one and season two. I just started going down and then I want to say, yeah, even through I loved the Marvel season, but I was still like, I was still dipping. And then I think one thing that I always do when I start dipping, I'm like, okay, I got to change everything now. And then I think that furthers the dip usually. Yeah, I would imagine and, so. And like, um, and I think there's some merit to being like, okay, let me look at what I'm doing and look how I can change it like for the better, but not just being like, okay, now let me start doing something that like, I don't, if I really had to sit there, like I don't even like doing, I'm not even excited about and just kind of sucks. And it reflects. usually it, it was, it was also because at the time, I mean, people would just tell me I would get like one thing that I think is super valuable that I didn't learn until recently somehow is don't take advice from people you wouldn't go to advice for. Yeah. And that is something that I wish I had listened to because I was going to my friends for advice. And why would I go to them for advice? Like on my content, the people that I want advice from are the people that are making similar content or doing super well in content and not like, again, this, my friend who hasn't studied it, hasn't looked into it, hasn't tried it, hasn't done anything and just thinks he knows. And they'll, they, they will be confident too. So it's hard <laughs> not to listen, but they're just confidently wrong. Like every time. <laughs> yeah. You kind of need um, to be in the space, especially for this type of stuff. Yeah, and then it's also just like I wouldn't go to someone who's not making my kind of content to ask for advice on my kind of content. Yeah, that um, makes sense. And so that was something that I wish I learned a lot sooner. But I was trying like, okay, let me do like daily uploads. Because um, usually my videos are like more edited, more thought out. A lot of planning goes into them. Um and then I switched to daily uploads. And I think that sort of like my my core audience was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and so I think it was until it was chapter two, like season one till season six was my dip. And it was a rough dip. But That's then a long dip. Yeah, it was a it was a long dip and it was a rough one. But I I kept through it. I kept going. And then chapter two, season seven was like i just i i i remember still i was in my room and i was like okay this is not working what do i need to do to make it work and i just wrote out okay i should try to play with this person i should try to do these like different stream events i should try to get to play the, this person i should be making these kinds of videos and i just wrote out kind of just like a game plan of like I need to achieve this. I need to achieve this. And I need to achieve this regardless of numbers. They were not like, I need to get 5,000 views. Mm. That didn't matter to me. What that mattered to me was making sure I was making something interesting that people wanted to watch. Um, and then slowly but surely from like chapter two, season seven, it was, okay, I accomplished this. Okay, I accomplished that. All right, I'm doing this. And then it just so slowly started to build. And it's interesting because now when I look back at that time, a lot of my videos around that time have 20,000, 15,000, 20,000 views. That's um, really good. And they didn't at the time. Oh, um, wow. At the time, I was still building it and they were getting 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. And then over time, people started either, you know, rewatching them because they thought they were so funny or there a lot of my videos like that style are very evergreen you want to like go back and be like oh what was this season like and let me watch this funny moments video on it um and i think now it's it's it can be hard to see the growth when it's happening for me um and so now i try to pay much more close attention and i think again my next dip um, was basically, I want to say basically started in like, again, probably vibing. And then until, dare I say right now, um, 
And I think I, I did the same thing again. I was like, okay, last year, I, a lot of stuff happened in my personal life. The uh, I, I was in like a crazy good situation where I was living in like a very nice house with family friends and just taking care of their dog. Um, but then the family friend uh, passed away oh. and and then the dog passed away. Oof, um, sorry. Yeah, it was within just weeks of each other. Ow. And um, that time, uh, then I had to find somewhere else to live. And then I think I, I really regret it's okay. I mean, I don't know. I so I found somewhere else to live, and then um, basically just the friends that I was was close to, um, just that relationship also went away. Mm -hmm. And so I think I, I what's interesting is at the beginning of that year, I was like, okay, this is going to be an off year. Like <laughs> I already knew it. I I felt it, and I knew that me trying to hold on to being the best I can possibly be is not going to be good. Like that's going to set me further back. So I just kind of let myself um, have an off year and, and not be, you know, the best version of myself, you know, and like trying to, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get up. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to make a video. I'm going to talk to these people. Like I couldn't do all that mentally. I just, I kind of checked out for a year. Um, but then just recently when I moved again um, and now I'm in my own place um, around my family again and I feel like now I can feel the ramping up. Like I'm feeling, okay, I want to accomplish this. I want to do this. I'm going to go aim for that. But overall and – if anyone is watching this video right now and I haven't released it yet, I might release it soon. I'm going to release my new ranked series video and it's going to be called um, Fortnite Ranked Got Racist. And oh no. <laughs> I did not. it is going to be my best video I have ever made. And I, <laughs> that is not a lie. That is 100% the truth. If... And if it doesn't do well, that's okay. But I have put so much time and effort into this video. And not only that, but other people have put so much time and effort into this video. And it's going to be so good. So please go watch it if you're watching this. Yeah, I know. And if you've already been, uh, watched it, go watch it again. <laughs> I know you've been putting a lot of work into that. I'm excited to watch it. Yeah. Do you have any time it, frame on that? It should be out Saturday. Oh, no so. way. I was shooting this for Saturday. All right, so same day, go watch it. I mean, we'll see how it goes. It's, I, I can, I don't know. My again, my life has ups and downs, and a lot of a lot of life to me is just, you know, make making sure you're being present during the ups so that you can fully enjoy them, and then being able to just ride the down, mm -hmm. um, and kind of just going through that. I think that's the, the main thing. If I had tried to. If I had tried too hard to just push myself constantly during that down, I know I would have burned myself out for even longer. It would have well, taken me two more years. Sounds like you did the right thing. Yeah. So um, um, you might have said it. I'm sorry if uh, you did. Was it this past year that you're talking about? Yeah. So last year, 2023. Okay. okay. So now things are on the upswing? Yeah. I mean, I, mentally at least for sure. And I think views wise very soon. Um, it's going to be hard because when you shoot yourself in the foot, when you're doing the best and sort of hit that downswing, it can be very hard to hit the upswing again. Um, but I figure at the very least, I'm going to make amazing videos and I'll Good. be proud of that. That's awesome. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of curious though, because you just said uh, you moved uh, where like, did you move far away from your family? So, um, basic timeline. I grew up in Virginia. We moved to Japan. We moved back to Virginia. Then we moved to Ohio. And then I was like, I hate this. And I went back to Virginia. That is such drastic changes. <laughs> yeah. Why? <laughs> so I lived, I lived in Virginia till I was around 10. Okay. Um, we moved to Japan for like five, six years. 
um, for my dad's work. And my parents also just wanted like a big change. Um, and then we, they wanted to stay longer actually, but my dad is doing, um, like military, uh, what's it called? I can't remember, not consignment, but something where he works with the military. Mm. Um, and then he had to go like re up on his like polygraph and, and stuff. And so he wanted to stay and he could have, but he had to get the certification again, basically. Okay. And when he was taking the polygraph, he passed out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and well. so basically he, you know, he got the certification again eventually, but for that, you have to like wait like six months or something till you can re certify or whatever. So basically that meant we were moving. And so we just moved back to Virginia. We were there for a couple of years. Then my dad got annoyed at his work and then was like, okay, we're moving to my mom's family is in Ohio. And so we moved to Ohio. And then eventually I was like, you guys, I've made a bunch of friends in Japan and I was having fun. You made me move away from them. Then we moved to Virginia. I made a bunch of friends in Virginia oh. and I was having fun. And then you give me two years and then we moved away from them. And now you're expecting me to make a bunch of friends in Ohio and I don't trust you that I'm not going to have to move away again. Um, so then I was like, I need to go away. And I just wanted to go back with my old friends. So I just went back to Virginia. Wow. And that was when I stayed in the family friend's house taking care of their dog. Just happened to line up well. Yeah, and, and I was able to be around my friends. So well, I mean, that's good. But then what happened isn't so good, eh? So, yeah. So it's okay if you don't answer this. Just where where are you at now? You're still in the same area, but I mean, did you get your own house? Are you in an apartment? What are you doing? So I actually now I'm I'm back in Ohio now. So I after moving in with that family friend, then what happened went down. Then I moved in uh, to like a more temporary situation um, in Virginia, and then uh, after that, I was like, okay, let me go back to being around my family at least for now and at least for a while so i got there i wasn't sure what i wanted to do i was like maybe gonna move to like california and try try that whole like content creator really like big thing there um and so i was like okay let me just like try six months in ohio see how it goes yeah why I not? Can decide. that's awesome how you feeling right now or are you having, are you undecided so, yeah i i'm gonna be here for at least another year Okay. Oh, um, and we'll kind of see how it goes. I really do want to buy a house eventually. And that way, you know, just like as an investment. And also, I think as a content creator, I like doing really stupid things <laughs> and being able to have my own place to do those really stupid things in, you know, and not have to worry like oh i might get the cops called on me <laughs> if i do this really stupid thing um that's what i want and i want i mean my vision for eventually i want a house where my streaming room i could literally just take a bucket of paint if i wanted to and throw it on the wall <laughs> and then not have to like care I get um that. and that's and then obviously the rest of the house would be normal but i want to have like a <laughs> crazy streaming room to just do whatever and then set things up however i want and but yeah now i'm trying to just get back on the mindset of like okay like let me if if i'm making the best videos that i can make and i already know that i can see success and i'm making the best shit and it's and i'm still not doing well then at least i am creating memories and making something that I can be very proud of. That's awesome. Well, from and an that outside is, perspective, it seems like you're doing a good job. You seem pretty, thank pretty you. good in good spirits. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling like so there there's days where I'll be like, man, I'm horrible at everything and I want to die. <laughs> um, but again, it's just about writing, writing those days. Usually I'd just like, I'll just hop on games with a friend and then just like, be like, oh man, I feel like I'm a failure and nothing's ever going to work. And then they'll just like sit there and be like, hmm. And then I'll be like, well, that's not really true though, because <laughs> I make, and then I start to like convince myself. <laughs> hey, usually, whatever I, you need I to feel do, better eh? by the end. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just about usually, I mean, I'll tell my friend, I'll be like, hey, can we play games so I can like bitch? And then you can just like 
be annoyed at me and then i'll feel better at the end <laughs> um but yeah writing writing those down because i know i know who i am what i am and my value but i just sometimes there's different days where i just like kind of forget it yeah that's, a, that's a bit. understandable but that's that's crazy i wanted to mention though i don't know how you move i was thinking this while you were talking about it i don't know how you move so much let alone like that drastic of a move because i okay so when i moved out of my parents house we moved into an apartment mm. and we were gonna do all the moving but then i ended up working in the morning so i was like okay just wait for me we'll move in the afternoon and then my girl got her whole family to like move everything. So I didn't have to experience moving at all, okay. which was awesome. And I just got, I got this house in September and I'm still like, I never want to move again. <laughs> and I had the easiest move of all time because I was in an apartment and the apartment building is like 30 second walk from my house. <laughs> so oh I can't God, imagine bro. moving that drastically that much. I never want to move again. You have no idea. I, so picture like, picture probably like the biggest uh, maybe not biggest u-haul but like second biggest u-haul <laughs> and i filled it myself oh, all I my stuff that's and crazy. i had to move all of that myself oh. from virginia to ohio yeah and oh. then it was also i mean yeah i was i was moving often um and I don't know, I don't know if you have any other questions or wanted to go to something, but there is something that you might find interesting that I could talk about. Yeah, why not? Hit me. So the reason why I have that much stuff is because I actually um, like resell stuff on the side and I, okay. I go to thrift stores and garage sales and I find stuff and then I, I put I it on eBay that. and yeah, maybe, so maybe you mentioned that that is, that is basically the way. So I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed to have a community that supports me like a fuck ton. Um, and I wouldn't, if I, if I wanted to, I could live in my apartment, um, and just do content and I could make things work because of how my community supports me and I would be able to do it, you know, main job. That's always what I'm doing. But, um, I think around like two years ago, I recognized the importance of having money. <laughs> like there was a time in content creation where I ate oatmeal for two weeks straight because <laughs> I did not have any money. And I was like, well, I'm like, what else am I going to do? I'm not going to go get a job because I know if I go get like a nine to five, making content for me is going to be extraordinarily hard. But once I'm a very like, um, I guess, entrepreneurial person. And once I started, you know, looking into, okay, look, what if I like, you know, go to this, go to the thrift store and try to find video games or toys or clothes or whatever, and then just flipping them on eBay and seeing like, can I make this into like a job? And now it's integrated so seamlessly with like my content creation side of things that now I'm able to use that money to get commissions done, animations done, thumbnails done, um, and do events where I'm giving away V bucks and that kind of stuff. Where, and and not only that, but like I'm able to, you know, buy stuff, flip it, and then buy more stuff, and then slowly grow my store and have more things selling more often, and it sort of just became this like side hustle for me that I feel like actually I would have thought, okay, if I divert attention, it's going to make me do horrible. Um, cause I'm not giving it my all, mm -hmm. but I think I found out like if I do the side hustle, then I can get an editor actually. Like I can, I can have someone else make my videos just as good, if not way better than I can make them. And I don't have to spend the, 10 hours editing a video um and i could just be going to thrift stores and making you know way more money that way that's um, awesome yeah and it was it, it took a while and you have to kind of like get into the groove but um like last year and this is just this is just in total sales but i sold last year a hundred thousand dollars holy worth of stuff. That's and nuts. So, Congrats. 
Thank you. But you know, that in that includes like shipping and the cost of everything. So if you really realistically what actually hits my bank account is m less than half well, of that. Well, still. Like that's Yeah, that's still crazy, it's crazy it's good thing to accomplish. And then basically all I've done is okay, I'm going to use that money to buy more stuff so that I can put on eBay so that I'll do more sales and then I'll also put that money back into my channel. So there's still times where I'm riding the fucking bottom of my bank account. <laughs> like a couple of days ago I had 67 cents in that bitch oh. <laughs> and I was making it work. Um but because of eBay, you know, I'll have 67 cents one day and then I'll get like a $500 paycheck. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, like I'm good. And then, you know, then I'll be like, okay, pay editor, pay editor, pay commission, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, I'll be back at 67 cents in my bank account. But at this point, you know, with the stuff I have, the income streams and I can, I can make things work. It was one thing that set me back is I, I went back to Japan for the first time in like eight years recently. Mm. Um, because I was just like, I've been wanting to do this for so long. COVID made it impossible. Like you just could not go. Um, they straight up closed. We had tickets to go and they said, no, like oh, you can't go. That's, I know somebody yeah. who had uh, tickets for a long trip too. And just yep. like, nope. You just could not go. So I had been saying like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. And then, you know, I think this year I've just been like, like, I'm just going to fucking do it. Like, stop. If I'm going to say I'm going to go, I could say that for the next 10 years and never go. So I'm just going to say, like, I am going. Like, I'm not, <laughs> like, I am going and I'm going to do it. And so that set me back. I mean, that trip is not cheap. And the amount of stuff that I bought is not cheap. But <laughs> luckily, I was, I was trying to make it work where it was like, okay, I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff. And then that way I can, like, offset the costs because I'll flip it back when I get here. Mm -hmm. And that's been going pretty good. Good. Um, and so, yeah, I think I, I didn't, I didn't quite hit my goal of, I wanted to pay for the whole trip by the stuff that I flipped, but I got close enough. And I feel like over the next, you know, it takes stuff a while to sell, but over the next while it will slowly start paying itself off. Hey, so that's all that matters. And you had a good mm -hmm. time. You need a break yes. every now and then, especially with yeah. the year that you, you went through. Exactly. <laughs> I think that was, that was like the time where I was like, okay, mental, total mental reset. Like. This is going to be kind of like the benchmark of everything shitty that happened. And then now <laughs> I can just be like, okay, fuck all that shit. I'm, I'm doing well now. Good. Yeah, actually, that's what I was going to, I was going to ask you too, like down the line, because we are definitely not going to get to everything that I wanted to ask you. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I still asked you two questions. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, 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 no. But that's exactly like what, what I want from this. So it's all, okay, it's, okay. it's all good. Just like, yeah, it's everybody getting to know Jojo anyways. Um, something that I was going to ask you is if you, cause I, I didn't remember this actually. I don't know if you ever told me if you were doing this full time, I was going to ask if you did anything on the side. Right. So, yeah. So I mean, I consider it like I'm doing it full time. The amount of work that I put into it, I mean, is basically full time work, but oh, I just yeah. also am a crackhead and do other <laughs> stuff too. What'd like, you do before? Did, before so bef before content? Yeah. Uh, so I started content basically like 18 mm -hmm. and before that was just hang out with friends, go to college. Oh, um, okay. and then life. yeah, regular life. Good. And, and then I got a job. I, I've had one job and I worked at a grocery store in the, um, produce section. And then I, I didn't mind it, but then um, I was like, yo boss, I'm going to go to Japan to see my newborn nephew. And he was like, how long are you going to be gone? I was like two weeks. He's like, ah, oh, you can't do that. And I was like, I quit. <laughs> and then I just went, did you quit on the spot or did you just like, I was just like, I, I was just like, I'm going. So yeah, I, I didn't quit on the spot. I gave him two weeks because I told him two weeks in advance of when I was going, maybe even a month. Wow. And he still said no. So I was just like, if I can't, if you're saying I can't go, then I have to quit. And then he was just like, okay. And then after that was sort of like, I just tried content and then I moved and I was doing college and I was just mixing things. And then eventually I started doing content more full time. Um, but again, now I have it. If I feel like most people don't understand how hard I work. If anyone saw what I do in a given day, they would be like, fuck that shit. <laughs> like I'm not doing that because yeah. I'm just like constantly working. No. Yeah. I definitely get that because uh, I won't get into it. It's not about me, but 
I I do some I do a lot of voiceovers on the side along with YouTube. Mm. So I am constantly on my computer doing stuff as well. Yep. The only thing that lacks, and if anybody's watching, as you can see, my editing is just the laziest thing in the world. That's why I would love yeah. to be an editor one day. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it's about you know just eventually you can eventually you can do it. Yeah, I I would love to get to a point one day where I can just I, I the, the, it's the whole thing about like just if you want to go to Japan, you can. It's it, yep. there's a, there's an element of freedom to it, but at the end of the day, you're still working like really really hard. But I still would love it so much more. I just I'm I'm not definitely not at that point yet where I can quit work because I still have a, a job during the week. Wait, can I? Add, what is your job? I'm a I supply clerk at one of uh, the hospitals in my area. So okay, okay, I needed something with a hospital. Yeah, I oh I long very long story. I had a lot of jobs in there, but where I'm settling yeah. in is ordering supplies to the hospital and then sometimes putting them away. Okay. So yeah. it's it's a nice uh, little office I get to sit down. I actually like brainstorm a lot of videos while I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I think I think one thing that like I really wish that I understood was like I viewed work getting a job as like I wouldn't be able to make content. But I think like that is so far from the truth for a lot of people. Mm. It's like sometimes like I mean you just you you need the job to be able to make content. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think that was one thing that I wish I, you know, it, it was weird because people told me go get a job and I'm, I'm not the person that gets like a normal job. Like I'm, I'm the type of person that I'll be like, I'm going to start my own business and making something profitable that actually works though, that I can like consistently get money from, but that is still like getting a job in my opinion. Um, it, it is, but it is like, I, okay, well, it is, but it's different when it's your own thing. It's just so much better. Yeah, but I, yeah, it is. But I think, I think my main thing is just like, make sure that you're, because when you're like financially okay, then you can be comfortable enough to make good content, mm -hmm. I feel like. Yeah, I don't know if I, if I have it in me to pull the trigger, but I want to one day. <laughs> Yeah, like actually just stop working, like dive into this. I would love to stream like every day. I would mm -hmm. love that. But now I have a kid and I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know. I, like, I'm okay with it. Don't get me wrong. I'm just like, I yeah. want to get to that point. I just don't know when I'll be able to pull that trigger myself. Yeah. I think it's just about looking at it and seeing what makes sense. Like eventually, eventually I also want to get to the point where I don't have to necessarily do this other stuff on the side and I can spend more time like figuring out what works but for me ironically like it helps me and this is just because of my crazy brain i think but when i go from working on stream and videos and everything to then working on like selling stuff on ebay it's almost like i'm taking a break like and then i can alternate I of see. like working on this thing that i'm really passionate about but then i can like kind of get burnt out so then i'll be like okay like time for a break and then i'll start posting stuff on ebay <laughs> um and then when I get burnt out of that, I can go to the other thing. And it helps me to like balance out the two things so that I'm able to do content creation like the most ever. Because if I get burnt out of content creation and I'm doing it full time and I'm just like, okay, I've worked on this like six hours today. Like I just can't edit another clip right now. <laughs> um, the only thing that I would think I would like do is like watch a movie and that's still like sitting at my computer and I don't really think that's beneficial. And so... I just I find other ways to make sure that I'm doing well, I guess. But yeah, that's awesome. I I'm all like I, I I'm so weird. I I haven't I haven't experienced the burnout yet, but I think that's because I don't edit. Yeah, I think that can be a lot a a lot of I don't burn out like burnout burnout. Um, it's more of just like I'm I'm working on this video for like you know, six hours today. And then I'm just like, I can't look at it anymore. <laughs> and it's just that kind of like day to day burnout of small things that I just need, you know, a 12 hour break from, and then I can come back to it at a hundred percent again. That makes sense. I do want to stop you for a second though. Cause we are approaching an hour. We're a minute off of an hour. How are we yeah. looking for time? Dude, like I swear this has been fantastic. If you have to take <laughs> off, just tell me. I, I, I mean, we could go 30 more minutes All right. if you want. And yeah, I, sh I should be good. I'll call it then. All right. So let's get back into it. I did want to ask a little bit more about your community because okay. you do have an awesome community. Thank and you. It's, honestly, it's not hard to see from 
someone who's starting to get to know you. Yeah. Did that start coming about like the same way through Reddit or was there like any events or something that you did to like really? So get that? I, I, I have, I would say it's been a more recent thing that I have. I was talking to Clark the other day actually. And I was telling him like, dude, like the almost the only thing that matters in content creation is community. Like if you can build a community and, and, and the way that I try to do that is I try to make really good videos to like hook people and then to join the community. And if you can build that community and make it just like a place where people like want to contribute, even if it's not monetarily, like I've had people and I'm, I'm starting to like really grasp the power of what that is. Like if just for an example, if someone in any of our communities like me you clark dag was like wait i'm just gonna start like clipping their streams mm -hmm. and posting it on tiktok because i want to like help out and i think that's cool mm -hmm. i don't think people understand that if like if we had like 10 people doing that and then they were also like the type of people that would be like yeah just go watch them like here's their link to their youtube or their yeah. twitch like all of our channels would probably grow like 2x in the next 100%. couple of months you and know what I don't get? Takes, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't go ahead. Go ahead. I, didn't, I didn't interrupt you. Sorry about that. I don't get the people who get upset about that stuff. Like, don't yeah. post my stuff. Don't post my stuff. Like, <laughs> right. So there's there's times where the times that it makes me mad is, um, there's zero way to tell it was me, um, and like there is no credit given at all. Then I'm like, okay, like this doesn't benefit me, and you're using it to benefit yourself. In those instances, I don't like it. But if someone's crediting me, go for it. Please go for it. Like, yeah. actually, I beg you to go for it. <laughs> I'm the same um, way. <laughs> yeah. And then if it's, I, yeah. So I, what I was saying is, I think just recently, I've been kind of understanding the power of a community and how I think if you can leverage your own community to grow your community, that's like the sweet spot. And I've been slowly like honing in on seeing how these other streamers, like the big boys, like the reason they grew a shit ton is they had people who were like dedicated to clipping their streams and posting mm -hmm. them on TikTok or helping them. Some people, there's people out there that they like your content. They'll be like, hey, I'll edit for you for like really fucking cheap because they see the vision. And those are the type of people that if you see like, yeah, you don't want to take advantage of them. But if you can be like, hey, dude, I recognize you're doing this for way too cheap. But I promise you, if it ever starts to work for me, I got you. Yeah. Like I got you and I will make sure that I like pay you back to the best of my ability that I can, but also understand that I can be a failure and this might not work. So like. <laughs> I fucking love you, bro, and we'll. I'll do my best. And I think mm -hmm. that's what I try to get across to my community is like, whenever you you're helping me, is like, I'm going to make sure that I get you back, even if the way you're helping me is by a five dollar Twitch sub. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make sure that I'm making the best possible content for you that you will like, so that you know you you get your money's worth and you are also investing in me so that I can make better stuff for you. And then not only that, but like I try to host events all the time and, you know, try to do just like funny, fun stuff where people can feel involved. People feel like they're part of the community because um, communities are just like really powerful. Like, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of streamers are like all about like, oh, parasocial, like you shouldn't rah, 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 be parasocial with these people. But I mean, like, I have made so many friends that are just people that liked my content, came to my stream, and I talked to, and I talked to, and now there's, like, a, a fuck ton of people where I'm like, yeah, this is actually my dead-ass friend. Like, we <laughs> became friends because of this. Um, and I think people just, like, like, yeah, I get it. If you're, like, parasocial with your audience, you're doing weirdo shit. Like, obviously, fuck off, but... <laughs> Yeah, you, there's there's different people like, dude, it's crazy to me what you just said, because I've said like the exact same thing on multiple occasions. Like uh, mm -hmm. like there's I and there's so many people too. Lurks. like 
I, I'm always at a crossroads because it's like, dude, like I see people like talking to me, like from I've got to know them through streaming. Like I see them so often. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm like, dude, I would love to like play with you off stream. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And yeah, I've, I've said that same thing too. Like for the people who like clip and stuff, cause that happens to me too. I've literally said the same thing. Like I'll remember, I'll remember this. Yeah, it's- exactly. And yeah, I think the the power of the community and I, it's been something so like I, I recognized it before and I would do these events and try to make everyone have fun. But now what I'm trying to do better is like I almost want to let my community shine like more than I do. Like they they are the people that actually like make my stream so fucking fun and make my content so interesting. And so I really want to get to the point where like anyone who, you know, has like a certain skill or is, is funny or whatever, like I could just do a stream or make a video that somehow involves them. Um, and just being open, I want to say like for a long time, I was like really closed off and not like able to experiment with that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just, just through like seeing how talented a lot of people in my community are and are willing to like, cause I I've gone to them and be like, bro, if, if you can help me out with this, it makes my video so much better. And you know, I'll, I'll pay you, I'll do whatever you want and then just make it, you know, how you want to make it. And if you want to be involved, cool. If you don't, that's, I get it. Um, and then just like going to people and like figuring out like, how can we, how can we as a community make our community better, I guess. So yeah, absolutely. that's what I've been doing. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's crazy to me, even through this thing, like I see a lot of similarities, similarities between us, mm-hmm. let alone just the, the gameplay, just interacting yeah. with the community and all that. It's, it's, it's really cool. So no, I totally, totally get everything that you're saying. So I wanted to ask you, mm-hmm. are there, you mentioned League of Legends and Smash Bros, but yeah. are there any other games that you also like dive really, really in deep into it? That's not Fortnite or, and this is Fortnite, even your favorite game. Fortnite is my favorite game. Um, it it, it kind of like separates by genres though. Like Fortnite is like my favorite like multiplayer game. Like um, like Breath of the Wild was a game that that's like my favorite like single player experience ever. S- like everything that I wanted, I had so much fun. It felt like it felt like I didn't deserve what I was playing. <laughs> um, know, I've heard that so much, but I've never played a Zelda game. It's- Breath of the Wild, man, is so good. I know that stands out. Yeah. Um, and there's so many other good Zelda games. But I, I've played I play a lot of games. It's just do I dive super deep into them? Like not necessarily. Um, but I have I have a lot of games. Like a a deep cut is I used to play Professor Layton like all the time. <laughs> That's a game on DS and it's like a puzzle game, but there's like a story and it was like my favorite game ever. And I played like every game in the series, but you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, Oh, let me like replay the game over and over and over, but <laughs> I'll play it. I'd finish it. And then I'd move on to the next game. Um, sorry if you can hear the people mowing right outside I my window. I just started hearing that. So it's all <laughs> <They're> like <laughs> right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was that I would say the only games that I've been like super, super into would be like Smash and then sort of the League, PUBG for a while too. The, the you, different stuff that I've streamed. Did you get in any competitive Smash or did you just like playing it? Yes. Oh, uh, I was, I was, I was like right below being able to at least top five in like the big tourneys around where I lived. That's so sick. Um, but it, the level that I would have to like, I just couldn't, I couldn't do the amount of dedication that it would take to get to that next level. And the, what I was stuck on is the game can play super fun. And then once you get to like, right at that level, it's like, I just have to play like such a pussy and it makes me (laughs) so mad. Like I have to be patient and think, okay. If I do this, they're going to do that. And let me just like wait it out so that I can like find a good moment and then go for the combos and and do all that stuff. And it, was, it just got to a point where I was like, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> did you play Ultimate or which one did you? Yes. Uh, so I played 
uh ultimate was probably the one i was the most competitive in same yeah um, it was it was easy for me because i i would when i lived at my parents my brother and i played smash bros every day from me <laughs> to brawl to four to smash ultimate yep. and that's how we got competitive yeah so i played i played probably melee was like the least that i played but i played a shitload of brawl with my friends um i still i still played melee like as a kid like all the time but mm -hmm. like at a like, I wasn't trying to be good because I was like eight years old Same. and I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I would just do rollout as Jigglypuff like over and over and over and over. But when I started playing Brawl, you know, me and like eight of my other friends would be playing and then we would do 1v1s. And then that was like, okay, well, I'm going to beat all of you and I'm going to be better, better than all of you. And then Smash 4 came out and then it was like the same thing. We would all play and 1v1s. And then I became like pretty good at that. Like probably best if not second best in the friend group um and then ultimate same thing and then that was when i was like okay like i was definitely the best in the friend group for like a while and then it got to the point where i was just like yeah same it was the thing where i was just like <laughs> i can't do this and then the, the community drama stuff happened and i was just like i'm out <laughs> like, i'm good yeah, i still no, love I the that. game but just don't play it as much yeah i i wish i could play it more because i wish it had like online servers but i, I just can't mm. i can't play online i can't do it it's too laggy yep. it's too horrible um who'd you make really bad i mained yoshi oh you don't see that one too often yeah and i think that was when i started going against like wolves as yoshi i was like yeah i'm gonna bash my head in if i keep playing this game <laughs> yeah yoshi I, I i dabbled with yoshi a little bit but nothing too serious but yeah so I'll get off uh, Smash Bros for a second. All and right. I also wanted to say while you're on it, I'm not going to expand on it, but I, I picked up League recently and it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I like it. It um, is fun. Is there any other content you would like to dive into one day? Oh, I think somehow I found like if I could just make funny moments videos for the rest of my days, I would be so happy. <laughs> like that is everything that I love doing because I don't think people realize the kind of videos that i make i want i want to be able to just like in the middle of one of my videos insert like a vlog and it just makes sense like it could be we go from playing fortnite and i like say say i say i uh i'm trying to think of like an example but say i knock tyler um one of my friends and he you know, gets super mad at me. He's like, what are you doing? Come res me. And I'm resing him. And then it cuts to me, like resing him in real life. And then I, I res <laughs> okay, him. I see. And then I he's see. like, yo, bro, what's up? And we <laughs> fucking, and he's like, want to go get Taco Bell? And I'm like, sure, dude. And it's just like a one minute segment of me and Tyler going to get Taco Bell. That's actually and, such a good idea. Yeah. Did like, you come I, up with I think, yeah, I just came up with it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm not even kidding. That's such a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think like there's just stuff like that, like I'm trying to do. And I, I guess I'll give a slight spoiler because I think it's so fucking funny and I'm so excited to see in the video. But in the video that I'm making, the ranked video, we we're playing ranked um, and we were getting shit on. And so one game I was like, we just got doo dooed on. And I was like, okay, fuck this. I ended my stream. I started my stream on my phone. I drove to McDonald's and I asked for an application. <laughs> <laughs> did they give it to you? They did. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And just like stuff like that, that I can insert into my videos. Um, and just, you know, just being able to do like kind of whatever, whatever I want in my videos. And... That's kind of what I'm aiming for right now. I want to make my videos like an experience that people like need to watch because they're like, I want to fucking know what happens this time. That's all. Yeah. And I so can see that. that's my goal. That's solid. What about any uh, vlogs? Do you plan on doing any more vlogs? So I would like to do an FNCS vlog for sure. Um, I did a Japan vlog and that was fun. Yeah. That's um, what I asked because I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's like a. A ch I, I would want it to be more I, I I need to develop it a little bit more like that was very basics like I don't really know what I'm doing um and so yeah I I, I want to do that but I just need to figure out kind of what I'm doing what I'm aiming for and how to go about it but I'm open to you know doing 
I started doing commentary stuff too, because I was just like, I feel like I have interesting thoughts about things that people don't really think about. And so I wasn't, I was very opposed to doing that for a while, but then I was like, I think, I think if I make a video like this ranked video, I want everyone to watch, but then if they don't watch my commentary stuff, like I don't really care. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. kind of just extra side content while I'm making the big thing. So yeah, the way I look at it is like, what could it hurt? Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know about you, but I don't look too much into which it could be a mistake on my end, but it's just what I do. Like I, if I, if I want to try something, I just do it. And if it bombs, I don't care. People like mm -hmm. would talk about that hurting your channel. I just leave it there. Yeah. I think there's, there's, there's some truth to it hurting your channel, but I think as long as you're not foregoing like your bread and butter, mm -hmm. then it's okay to try other stuff. Yeah. That, that's kind of where I'm at. So here's something interesting I want to ask you. And mm -hmm. I almost didn't because it's a little touchy. So okay. please don't feel obligated to answer, of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something that I admire about you, same with Clark actually, is that you're not afraid one little bit to dive into like really sensitive jokes. Yeah. Why do you, it's, it's tough because that kind of teeters the line sometimes for guidelines. Do you ever worry about that? What may, what, why do you decide to do that? Which is awesome. Again, I admire it. Cause I yeah. think it's hilarious. So for me, I'm like, I, I think if people understood, cause like, you know, the, the type of people that will get mad at jokes. And I do think they're, for me, I try to ride the line as close as possible before <laughs> I think it's like genuinely, it's like sometimes there's, there's jokes where people will just say the N word and be like, haha laugh. And <laughs> yeah, to me, like I'm like, you're one it's a bad joke just no, by design there, yeah there's a big difference <laughs> yeah and so there, to me i'm like i'm never gonna go do that and it's it's lazy it's not it, to me it's not even funny mm -hmm. um and then it's kind of like the joke at the end of the day usually there is just like haha i'm a bigot and it's like <laughs> <"Good>, congrats <laughs> you're a bad person <laughs> um and i think I think if people actually like sat and talked with me, they would realize that I'm very like, um, I really care about a lot of the issues and, I, but I'm also willing to like, I think, I think jokes, a lot of how I handle like really bad shit is by making light of it. Like, and and I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, so I'm okay if people get mad at it. Like that's you're you can get mad at it, but calling me a bad person because of it is like kind of where I I'm like I don't really agree, and maybe we just need to go separate ways, and that's fine too. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I like I like finding the humor wherever you can get it, and to possibly being like be able to cope with hard shit that's going on by making light of it is kind of just like. How I go about things. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. I'm just because I I I don't think I've ever really. Oh, I don't know. I guess I do sometimes, but you you guys definitely take it up a little bit of a notch than what I usually do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think it's it, it, as long as you, as long as you're like looking at what you're making fun of and like what the intentions are. Mm -hmm. Um, like if there's someone. I don't know. I, I, I think it's pretty easy to tell that in my jokes and in my um, bits and, and whatever that I'm like not a hateful person. Like I think people and maybe some people will think that I am and that's OK. But I think people can tell that it's usually quite the opposite. Like I am extraordinarily accepting of like basically fucking anything. <laughs> and like I try to. I, my my motto is as long as you're not hurting yourself or hurting anyone else like you do you man and that is that is kind of like you know golden rule too of treat others how you want to be treated kind of thing and so i look um, at it as like a it's good to laugh type thing it's that yeah, simple to me it is. and it's also just it's nice to fucking to laugh about <laughs> shit and to laugh about serious stuff too it's yeah you know <laughs> absolutely i'm so, not trying to just be crying my whole life <laughs> no that i guess you could uh branch into this next one do you ever deal with any hate oh my god yes um 
ironically, like, oh man. So I, I, I think I mentioned it last time we were on stream, but someone, someone was trying to oh, get my yeah. accounts taken down. I like guess I could have started with that one. Yeah. For, <laughs> for literally like probably 24 hours, I was getting email, 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 email. And I just, you know, talk to the support and I was like, Hey, like, this is what happening. This is what happened to my content creator. Like someone's obviously trying to get my shit taken down. And then basically what was happening is it, it got taken down and then I peeled it and it, after a while support, you know, came back up and then it was like down, up, down, up, but it seems like they've stopped. And also there's just been people who will like stalk me, like, uh just being on all my posts and there's people who you know used to be in my community who then like i would ban because they were like toxic and like mm -hmm. the worst kind of person and then now they just like subtweet and yap about me all the time <laughs> it's funny and, i'll like, never let it go yeah i'm like dude i i don't even dislike you like just just go live your life, find someone else to, you know, enjoy their content. Like you don't have to think about me and I don't have to think about you and we can both live happy lives. But I think some people just like having something negative in their life sometimes to just constantly dwell on her. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> how do you, how do you deal with any of it? You just, so, kind of, it seems like I you mean, kind of shrug it off. Yeah. At, at this point, like for a while, uh, back when I was like booming and stuff, I was actually leveraging the hate to make sh like to get more popular. Um, I was doing like one of the things people. So my first like real rush of hate was I had just moved a ton of stuff back from my parents back to Virginia. And I had a bunch of I was moving it in trash bags. Um, and then I was like going to record a dance that just came out. Um, in my tomato head costume. And I was like, wait, what if I just put all the trash, like trash bags all together in the background so that it just looked like I was living in a dump. <laughs> and I like put toilet paper around too. And I just made it look as bad as possible. And then I also, I like, I started streaming and acted like it was an accident. Like I was, I meant to record, but then I accidentally started streaming. And so then I was just doing the dance for like 15 minutes, trying to like <laughs> practice it in front of stream. And like everyone in my chat was like, what the fuck is going on? Dude, that's and then it like, so funny. <laughs> it like blew up on Twitter and then like people were reacting to it. And, um, and then I just got like this hate mob of people who like dead ass thought I was like a slob living in a garbage <laughs> den. Oh no. Um, and so then they just like, they were, just like sending me targeted harassment for like literally months. Like they would join my customs just to grief them and kill me. Oh. And like, they were doing that for months, dude. And they would also, they would make posts about me calling me like a disgusting person about anything. Like one time in my car, I, I was driving and then someone fucking cut me off. So I had to slam on my brakes and I had, a milkshake in my seat and it spilled all over the place. So then when I got home, um, I got home as fast as possible. I snapped a picture of it and then I cleaned it up. And then I said, bro, I'm never letting little whip in my car ever again. <laughs> and, and then people were like, bro, why are you not cleaning up the ice cream? Your car's so dirty. You're a slob. You're disgusting. And I was like, dude, I literally pull out my phone. It's a five second procedure that happened. Took a picture, <laughs> cleaned it all up. And people were acting like I just left it there and didn't care. And I was like, oh my God. And so I was just dealing with people that think they know like the ins and outs of any situation. And then just like assigning like the worst possible thing onto me and just acting like that was the truth. But also at the same time, they were literally boosting my posts. Like they were getting thousands of likes for me literally doing nothing other than provoking those people to quote retweet to like or not to like it, but quote retweet and comment on it. And on the algorithm, that's like 90% of the work yeah. that they were just doing for me. And so it was and then it was just finding people who like obviously saw the joke and didn't mind. And then they did like a lot of the heavy lifting. But after a while, 
I think the thing that got to me about it was then my friends started being like, bro, like you're being embarrassing and everyone is hating on you. And so that kind of made me like step back from like doing that kind of thing. Mm. Um, which at, at some point I kind of, I kind of wish I pushed back on my friends more about being like, bro, I'm literally just like, you know what I'm actually doing. You can see that it's not some yeah. bullshit. So who cares if fucking 300 people on Twitter think I'm like the grossest person ever. <laughs> like if I'm getting 200 viewers a stream, you know, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, but I think there's like a kind of a balance. Cause I think the sort of rage farming can lead you to doing bad stuff just to get views you know yeah it it's funny how arrogant some people can be about it like analyzing your life like <laughs> mm -hmm. bro they're like dead ass convinced i know i know <laughs> this this was the way things are i'm like bro i what do you want me to do to prove you like <laughs> you are just wrong like i, I and when it comes to people like again i'm i I could be like a very confident person. If so, if you're wrong, I'm like, I well, you're wrong. So I don't need to think about this. <laughs> like it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I always just let it go. What would your advice be to anybody who would be dealing with that? I think like there is there is stuff in content creation that can be scary, like getting doxxed or swatted or stalking and stuff like that should be taken very seriously. But when it comes to just like internet hate um and people doing that kind of shit i mean it's like at the end of the day they're a fucking loser they're wrong and they're a loser and they're pitiful like imagine having so much free time where you can just fucking go to people's customs to kill them and then dance on them like go get a job mm. or hang out with your family if you have that much free time you have a bad life so at the end of the day I feel sorry for those type of people. And I think eventually they'll realize that they are embarrassing themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, I always personally, like the griefing is, I, I rarely do customs anymore because it's ridiculous. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous what people do, but I always, I legitimately, and I might be just weird about this. I just laugh at hate comments. Like my friend on my, uh, over my MMA channel, I, mm -hmm. I, I broke down a fight and it was, it was a really, really good video. <laughs> and right. I was wearing a Teen Titans shirt. And then my friend went and commented, nice Teen Titans shirt. What do you know about fighting Virgin? And then a bunch of people <laughs> just kept agreeing with him. <laughs> just, I ended up getting a lot of dislikes on that video too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's just, it, I, I legitimately laugh at that stuff. We still talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, it's kind of like when it, when, especially when it just comes to like someone leaving a hate comment on YouTube, I'm like, thanks for the bo boost in the algorithm. And then yeah. I just move on. Yeah, it's a, it's a special kind of thing. But we're approaching an hour and a half. I want to ask you one more thing. Okay. So a lot of people are, with, especially with Donald Mustard and the interview mm -hmm. that just came out, they're thinking about taking off from Fortnite content. Yep. What are your plans with that? Because it seems like you still have it down with the funny moments and everything. And right. do you think people should stick around with Fortnite? I think, okay, here's my plan. You, like people are you know thinking about leaving so my plan is to go harder than i ever went before and make the best fortnite content that i've ever made before and i kind of hope that the content creators that are thinking about leaving actually leave so that there's <laughs> less competition for me like that is kind of my point of view on things and if the game is fun this season has been so good and if it's fun and i can make good content on it and i have friends that are having fun with me and are enjoying it too then i don't really care about the other content creators that are leaving like they're i think some people don't realize and again like if i think being able to be positive even when things are looking negative is like so important mm -hmm. and these content creators that are leaving like i do if i do i of course wish them well and i hope they find success at whatever they do um but I think so many people are going to realize like, fuck, I should have stayed like I and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like if I'm making the best content that I can, that at the end of the day, it's going to be good. And I think a lot of other people are going to try other stuff and realize like, wait, this is like just as hard. And these companies don't care <laughs> as much as Epic does. Yeah. And like, yeah, I don't know. I 
my plan is to go harder than ever before. So, dude, what's funny is I kind of think the same thing um, because I it, it's reminding me a little bit about how Chapter Two Season One was because remember everybody was like thinking about quitting content. People did quit right. content, and mm -hmm. Cipher PK blew up more than ever. Mm -hmm. He stuck with it, daily grinded, and yep. then I I always think Fortnite will be back. Like I don't even necessarily think it's at a low point. Like you said, it's a really I, good season. I really yeah, I don't think it's at a low point either. I think like the community is at a low point. Yeah. Um, but I. I think there's a lot of people who should have quit the game two years ago that are still playing. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we're at like how annoying the community is right now. I'll say this. Jojo has a video called you have an abusive relationship with Fortnite and yep. it's entirely accurate. <laughs> Anybody watching needs to check that out. Like I swear it was, it, 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 it was like, I don't even know what to say about it. Like uh, it described people so well. Yeah. That's the thing. That's yeah. It's something I've noticed for a long time and that people just like, just let it go, man. Just if it, if it's not, Fun for you, let it go, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't get that about people. But we're at about 15 seconds off an hour and a half. I'm going to let All you right. go. Do you have any closing remarks? Anything you'd like to share? Floor is yours. Um, I just say to everyone, try to try to be positive, even when things are like looking negative. And there's always going to be times where, you know, life is about ups and downs. And enjoy the ups while you have them. And ride the downs while they kind of suck. And then you'll be able to catch the highs again. Okay. And, uh. It's so simple, enjoy life in the moment. Way. Yeah, it's so simple, but it's a good way to look at life. Yep. Jojo, thank you very, very much for coming on. It's been thank an honor. you, Glenn. You know, coming into starting this series, I was very excited for it. I didn't I kind of had a gauge on how it would go, but I never thought we would get like as deep as we have been. And just like this one, man, it was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. I really, really like Josiah as a person. And I it's crazy to me. It's probably why. I enjoy streaming with these guys so much is because actually there's a lot of similarities between not just the way we play games, but kind of just viewpoints in general. It seems like things are lining up a little bit. So it was fantastic. Jojo, if you happen to be watching this long, it was an honor having you on. Thank you very, very much. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video too. I'm sure you did if you ended up watching this way through. But man, it's crazy to me the view duration on these things. You guys have been really liking it. So honestly, thank you very, very much for the support. It's I mean, I, I really like doing this. And we're going to keep going. As of right now, we have two more people lined up. And there's going to be definitely more down the road. So, guys, thank you for your continued support. Again, Jojo, it's been... I can't express to you how much of an honor it was. Thank you very much for sharing such intimate details about your life. This is already a long video. And the outro is way too long, guys. Thank you for watching. Check out the video on screen right now. I'll see you over there. Take care.